All right, let's continue on here. I'm gonna change the boot process. Instead of the add file table entry shell script, we have a new program to make the actual disk file. And I just have a couple of things here to start off, just like two line changes. I'm gonna change the boot process on this video, sort of changing the boot sector in the second and third stage bootloaders to use the new file system that was written to the new disk image. <laughs> Tried to get it to boot and probably debug and we'll see how that goes, but Changes here from the end of the last video. I'm in the make disk.c file when we're writing the super block. I changed the inodes here. I don't know if it was plus two or minus two or what before, but I'm just having the inodes equal num files because I think that was a little off. Uh, we take the number of files we have, which I think is eight or 10 here, but these two are included in the boot block. So I don't want to include those yet in the actual files because they're not, they, there's no inodes or anything made for them yet. So I'm just changing that here. Um, originally, whatever it was, I'm going to have num files, which is 10 right now, subtract 2 for the boot sector in the second stage, because they're not really included yet. But in the root directory, we do have inodes for an invalid inode 0 and for the root directory itself. So we kind of subtract 2 for files that aren't in there, and then add 2 for extra files, which kind of evens out here. Also, to determine the number of data bits in the file system, I think I, I was not taking into account the number of inodes. So I move the number of inode blocks from down here up above before we get the data blocks and the number of data bits. So the number of inode bits is just the number of inodes converted to blocks from the size of an inode. And then I'm using that number now to determine the number of data bits. I'm subtracting the number of inode blocks because that is not counted in the number of data bits. That only counts the number of blocks on the disk uh, from the data bitmap sort of forwards or just from the data blocks forwards but that's all i'm doing here those are the only new changes it doesn't make much difference there so okay i want to change the the boot sector and the second and third stage bootloaders so i'm going to do that okay so instead of doing this i'll read file table and read everything into memory first second third fourth later who's on first anyway Second stage bootloader, the kernel, the font, and all this, we're going to be probably gutting this out, removing it. I don't need to determine cylinder head sector because I'm going to move to LBA, which is just a zero-based sector number. It's a lot easier. I don't know why I didn't do this before, because I thought it was worse than it was, I think, but that's all right. Load sector loop, that'll remain the same. Uh, we won't need this because we're not going to use the file table anymore. We have a new file system. So this can all be removed, and I forgot I'm not in C. It's a semicolon. I'm not going to be determining these things. I guess I'll leave those there for now. These we're not going to need. Drive number we'll keep. So what changes am I really going to make here? It'll be mainly, we'll say here. I'm going to read in uh, the boot block. Read in the boot block and the super block. So I can just do them both within the boot sector. That's fine. I'll say to memory. Or the second stage bootloader to use. So second stage will assume that stuff has already been loaded. So second stage is within the boot block. So we're loading the full boot block, which is the first eight sectors on the disk. And the super block will be the eight sectors after the first eight sectors. However, the boot sector is already loaded already by, you know, the BIOS and the computer on setup. That is one sector. So out of the total 16 here, eight plus eight, we only need to load 15. So 15 sectors here. Well, I'll just say 16 minus one or eight minus one <laughs> for boot block minus boot sector and eight for super block. So the number of sectors to read minus one is going to be, I guess what I'm currently using is BX when I'm loading sectors down here in the load sector loop. I'm using BX as a count of the sectors we're loading. So since we already start off loading one, it needs to be the count minus one. So we can move 14 or it can move AL I want to be a little bit more generic and then decrement BL. Number of sectors to read, minus one. All right, I'm going to read them into starting location 7E00 in memory because that's the next sector from the boot sector. Since it starts at 7C00, I'll just put the bootloader where it's normally going at 7E00. It could be anywhere else, but I'm just sticking it there. Uh, read sectors to this address. So 16 sectors total starting at 7C00 will be 8K because eight sectors per disk block and each disk block is 4K. This is 8K or 2000 in hex. So we'll have 7C00 to 
9C00 will be taken up by the boot block and the super block. So 7C to 8C will be the boot block, and 8C to 9C will be the super block address. Okay, so if I want to set stuff up to read, we can do the normal int 13, or we can keep using the uh, the ATAPIO ports, so I'm just going to keep using those to not use the BIOS interrupts for no good reason. I'll write the, the head first, the head drive port, and flags. Um, I'm going to move ALE0 before we were doing A0. That's fine. So before we were doing A0 down here, we're ORing it with A0. So instead of doing that, I'm going to move the value into AL and then OR with the other values. But instead of A0, I'm doing E0 because bit 6, I believe, needs to be set. That, right? So bit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 needs to be set for LBA. Bit 6, yeah, we'll just do equal 1 for LBA instead of CHS. And this is head or drive number 1. Or whatever, whatever the default drive is, it's it's head zero because these are all zero. But you just drive one primary drive instead of the secondary. Okay, we'll just write that to dx. Then we'll do the number, the regular ones for the sector count and everything. I'll redo that here. Number of sectors to read. So we'll increment 1F3. This is the sector number port slash LBA low. So instead of the cylinder head sector, uh, you know, CHS low, mid, high, or whatever, we'll have LBA low, mid, high. And then an extra four bits for 28-bit LBA will be in the top of the head and drive port. I'm not doing that because I don't have that many sectors to load from, but I probably should be doing that if I really wanted to. The LBA on the disk is only going to be 0 to 15, so we don't need to do this, but later on we will if it's a higher amount. And I'll just do that in C later. We'll change how we read and write disk sectors. All right, move AL. I'm doing 1. So the sector, the sector count is how many sectors. The sector number is what sector you start reading from the disk, or what LBA we start reading from on the disk. Separate it out into low 8 bits, mid 8 bits, high 8 bits, and then highest 4 bits for 28-bit LBA. But I'm only going to be reading from the second sector onward for 15 sectors. So the second sector um, in LBA is 1. In CHS it would be 2 because CHS is 1-based sector addressing for no good reason. LBA is 0-based sector addressing. So the second one would be 1. LBA 1 is second disk sector. It's 0-based. Okay. And we'll have 1F4, uh, which is cylinder low or LBA mid. So this is the first eight sectors. So let's just do our first eight bits of LBA number. We can do this, or we can just XOR AX. Instead of doing first eight bits, I'll do this. We'll do bits 0 to 7 of LBA. It's 8 to 15 of LBA. Uh, 1F5. Cylinder high. LBA high. We don't have to do anything. <laughs> I'll just mark this here. It's 16 to 23 of LBA, and I don't have up here, let me change this, because I had this differently in, in docs, documentation, so I'll do bits, 0 to 3, it's LBA, bits 0 to 3 instead of the head number, for LBA, it's the top 4 LBA bits. So we have 0 to 7, 8 to 15, 16 to 23, and up here we have 24 to 27, 4, 28 bit LBA, I'm not doing 48-bit uh, LBA, but I will be later on, probably. 
I'm going to do UEFI in 64 bit in however long from now. Uh, bit four is the drive. Bit five is always set. Bit six is set for LBA. And bit seven is always set. Okay, that's why we have those. But the top four bits of the LBA are zero because the only thing that's set is the one here. So that's why I'm doing that. So we can have one F7, which I'll just increment twice. Which is the command port. Um, 20, we'll do read. Read with retry. Okay, then we'll call load sector loop. Which I already have down here to load sectors. So that part doesn't really need to change because DX is set to the command port. We're still loading, we're still reading 256 or one sector in words. Checking the alternate status register, see if we still have sectors to read. We'll read those if so, or else we'll go on. So that's fine. That can all stay the same, but we don't need to do the load sector garbage anymore, which that's nice. It's not really garbage, but uh, yeah, we don't need to do that anymore, which is nice. Don't need to do this stuff anymore. We'll read in other things, not the file table. That won't be used anymore. But I'm just going to comment all this out because the second stage is going to be read into memory now from that. Um, the kernel I'm going to read from the third stage bootloader, probably. I don't need to mess with that right now. Uh, font we can read in from the third stage bootloader. That's okay, and then we can jump to the second stage, which is loaded at 7e. That's fine. This is just a global address. That's okay. Okay, so I loaded the boot block and the super block. So now that I have the super block loaded to memory from doing this, the super block has info. Uh, the super block has info on the inode for the bootloader, right? Thought I had that here. Or, well, I know it's, I know the bootloader is at a special reserved inode. That's probably not, I didn't store that in Superblock. Um, what I did store is where the first inode starts. So I have the first inode block within the Superblock. And then within make disk, I'm setting the, the third stage bootloader at a certain reserved inode number, which is going to be inode 2, I think I set up, right? Because uh, it starts at 2, and then 0 based indexing, 0, 1, 2 is third stage, so yeah. This will be at inode number 2, so since I have the super block in memory, I can parse the super block, or just load the offset for the right field. Uh, for the first inode block, and then I can offset from there to, to the bootloader inode for the third stage bootloader, and then I can load that to memory, so I'll be doing that here. To parse super block for first inode block um, offset to reserved bootloader inode for third stage bootloader inode two and load its memory. Okay, just so we don't have to do other loading within the second stage bootloader, I can just do this here. So the super block, which I'm going to use this as a constant, so I guess I'll do this super block will have equal 8C00. So the first inode block is going to be at the super block plus whatever its offset is. So this is plus 4, plus 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 for the first inode block. So plus 12 or C. So each disk block is 4 kilobytes, or 8 sectors, 512 bytes. Okay, so I use CX for this for whatever reason, so I'll do that. <laughs> I'm going to put into CX the result of multiplying the first inode block uh, by 8, because the first inode block is a block. And a block is 4K, or 8 sectors, so I have to 
multiply the block number by 8 to get the right sector number where the first inode block is on disk. So I'm just putting that into CX. Disk sector or LBA, first inode block. Okay, and then I'm going to read that block. So read first inode block to memory. Eight sectors for a block, minus one. And I'm going to read that into B, just for an address to read from. I did B for some reason. I guess just to B out of the way. <laughs> That's what it did. And then I'm going to do this, this stuff up here. So a little bit of repetition, I guess, but oh well. Again, we'll move uh, E0, keep doing that. We'll write it out there. Where's one F2 here? Let's do this. This will be eight this time. Just move this stuff down here. Um, this time the LBA, the LBA number, zero base, is going to be in CX. So the lowest eight bits of the LBA will be in the lowest eight bits of CX or CL. Um, the next eight bits will be in the next eight bits of CX or we can do CH. Uh, the next eight bits will be in the next eight bits. <laughs> so I can do shift right CX by... Well, CX is only going to be right here, uh, 16 bits. So actually, this is okay. It'll only be 16 bits because I'm only I'm not doing ECX. So actually, that's okay. Otherwise, I could shift right by eight and then take, or shift right by 16 and then take you know CL and the top four bits by ending with F and move that into AL for here. You know, I can do that, but I don't need that right here, so that's okay. We'll just XOR because we know it's going to be within the 16-bit limit. All right, read with retry. We'll call load sectors. We'll load that block to disk. Well, from disk to memory at B. Okay, so address to read into. So first inode block will be at B to C. Is 1,000 in hexes 4K or the size of one block or eight sectors that I'm reading in? Okay, so now that we read the first inode block to memory, I can parse that inode block to get the second inode for the bootloader. So I can do that here. Read bootloader inode to memory. So this is inode 2, and each inode is 64 bytes in size. So the bootloader inode will be at a, at a base of B, and we want the second one, so we'll offset by two inodes, or 128. Okay, so the size of this inode in sectors is going to be bootloader inode plus whatever that offset is within, <laughs> within the inode T. So the size and sectors here, we need the offset by 4, by 5, plus 4 is 9, by 9. Okay. So offset of size sectors in inode T. Okay, and then I'll get extent 0, which is going to be... This is plus 9, this is 8, right? 9 plus 8 is 17. I'm not great doing odd numbers, but that's okay. This will be at 5, this will be at 9, this will be 9, this will be at 13, and this will be plus 8, this will be 21, actually. 21. Since these will only have data written right now to uh, extent 0, that's all I have for the bootloader. Uh, we don't need to read the other extents. If it was a big bootloader, or possibly went into the other extents on disk, then I would have to read those, but 
we should only have to deal with extent zero values. So that, that's not too bad. So an extent has the first four bytes being the disk block, not sector, but block that something starts at. So I'm going to put that into CX because that'll ultimately be the LBA or disk sector that we translate it to to load from. We'll do similar to above. We'll load extent zero, multiply it by eight. This will be first block. Uh, translated to disk, sector, LBA. And then inside of BX, we'll do the length, which will be plus four, the next four bytes inside of the X10. And I don't think I showed that actually, so I'll show that uh, here in the X10, yeah. First four bytes are the first block, second four bytes are the length in blocks, and I have to multiply by eight to translate blocks to sectors or LBA. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, and I can reset things up. I don't think I have to reset the head every time, the head port, but uh, I'll just do it anyway. That's, that's fine. That's probably fine. So the sector count, yeah, sector count is the number of sectors to read, which is going to be the length in sectors from the length in blocks. So that'll be from BX. So I'll put BL here. And then where that starts on disk is in CX. So that'll go to the sector number ports and the LBA ports here. For the first, we have CL for the first eight bits, we'll have CH for the next eight bits. Then I'm going to shift to right. This time I'll shift right. In case it's a bigger number, I guess, we'll do ECX. Mm, I should put these into CX if I do this, but I know these are only, well, they're four bytes, right? Yeah, I'll put these into the, the E numbers because they may be bigger than 16 bits in size, I don't know, but I'll just do this. The bootloader inode may be further on the disk if the root inode's huge later or something. I think that's why I did that, but that's okay. We'll get BL, BL's fine, CL. The lowest eight bits, the next eight bits, we'll shift right by eight. And we'll get the next eight bits. Uh, we'll probably wanna do 16 if we do that, or yeah, yeah, we'll do 16. So CH and CL are overwritten with the top 16 bits. And then we'll move CL, yes. And then I will need to change this actually. I'll put this down here, which I think is okay. <laughs> we'll do this. Um, okay, let me isolate the top four bits by anding CH with F. Get top four bits only. Okay, and I'll move into ALCH, and then we'll OR it. All right, I'll OR with E0, there we go. Set flags. Okay, this will be, it's 24, 27 of LBA. Yeah, and it'll only be the lowest four bits because the top are zero here, yep, and then we'll OR it with the top four bits for the other nibble. Okay, yeah, that'll work. And I moved it, so we can just increment again here as well. If I do that, save a, save a byte. And we only have to increment once there for the command port, redo with retry, put that there. That will, yeah, that should be okay. Uh, okay, so after I do that, this will be reading in the bootloader to memory. So to read the bootloader to memory, I want to put it at a different memory location, different memory address than like low memory at C1000 or D1000 or whatever. Uh, right now, the bootloader, the third stage bootloader, go into source here, is at 50,000, I think. Yeah, it's at 50,000. So I'm going to lo load it to 50,000 again. I'll just do that here. Uh, before we call this, BL needs to be the number of sectors minus one, so I'll just decrement this first. Okay, and I can't directly load 50,000 into, I mean, I could directly load it into EDI, but since we're not in protected mode, that's not really how it's gonna work, so I have to, you know, load it into ESDI, right? So that's what I'm doing here. I'll load 5,000 into AX, because I can't directly move into ES. 
50,000 or 5,000. So I have to load it into another register, put it in there. So ES 5,000. Okay, then I can XOR DI so that ES DI equals 50,000 because the segment register multiplies by 16 implicitly. So that's where it will be loaded to because that is where load sector loop, right? Yeah, that is where in string word points to. It points to ESDI that it reads these into. So that's why that has to be set with ES, not just DI. Okay, then we'll call load sector loop. Then I'm going to reset ES here. Okay, and then we can load, so I'll just put that up here. And that should be all, I believe. Okay, now I shouldn't have to change that. So that should load the second stage, but I can check that here before I remove all these other commented out code. I'll, I'll check that, I guess, but we have to change the make file to load. <laughs> Uh, to use make disk for any changes we need in the boot sector and everything, so I'll be changing the make file as well. Always fun. Um, in testing, I actually don't need no stack protector anymore, so I'm going to get rid of that, just to have one less flag here. And we don't need special cases for the boot sector in the file table anymore, so we can remove those. But since the special cases for the boot sector and the file table doesn't exist anymore, but the boot sector is going in the boot block, and that's handled within makedisk.c. So I don't have to put that anymore. We're not messing with the file table anymore. So I don't need this. Aha! No extra text files or anything. Uh, we're not doing add file table entry. That's obviated now. Get rid of that. But C files and assembly files uh, will work the same. We'll pad those out. That's okay. But now instead of doing this, we don't need the file table stuff. Writing the files to the disk image, so we're not really using bin files actually. And we're making the disk image according to whatever size is in make disk, so we don't need this. And we're not going to write that anymore, and we're not going to make a temporary file, so this is all going to be disappearing. Okay, and I'm just going to make our make file thing here or make disk rather <laughs> our disk image program i'll just i'll compile and run it here and i don't need as many flags because this isn't part of the os so all i need is the include and that should be all right if it makes it all right we will make the disk and we'll silence those no output from those and I'm not going to send it anything. Later we can send something for like the file size or like, uh, you know, the list of files. Maybe we can send these. I don't know if that'll work. If I send it like $C files <laughs> or something. Or well, we, bin. I'll keep bin, I guess. If we send it bin files, like does that count as one argv if I send it to here? I don't think it does, but I'm not sure. I haven't tested that. So I'll leave that for later. Of course, we'll add another to-do, of course. <laughs> How to send list of files to make disk. I don't think this would work. I think it would be one per file, but I'm not sure. But that will make this simpler, assuming that that works. So it probably won't work. Because, you know, nothing ever does. Instruction expected. Bootsect. 52. Uh, this, oh, I need EQU. Of course. And that was it. Okay. And we create the disk image. All right. That's good. It made the thing 360. So if I look in bin, we have the os.bin. Is that what I can? I did call it os.bin, right? Yeah, not test image. Well, it says right there, test image.bin. It did not make test image. 
but I probably called it something didn't different and did not rename it in the file because I'm a I'm a smart person like that. No, I called it this. That makes me think it did not work. Which is not good. <laughs> yeah, it uses image name. Okay, let me put a new line there first anyway. It did make it and run it, so I know this part worked. That's good. Should have put it within the bin directory. That is all right. Hmm. Okay, what if I remove... Uh, if I remove that, there's nothing in there. Except for box source, okay. And we have those there. So OS.bin is not being created, okay. Which is not good. If I run this manually, uh, I still don't see it. <laughs> Well, I get to debug why this doesn't work again. It's not in the current fold. Oh, it's in the current one. OS. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm a genius. That's okay. <laughs> it creates it in the current folder because I named it with a relative path. I have to do this. And then this is what? Seven. Nice. We'll F open that. That is fine. And we'll make, uh, address of image name so it still reads the same seven to skip that prefix all right i am i am a dork and that is all right hey look the os dot bins there hey you got to put it in the right folder and it's still 1.44 megs so that's good okay does this actually run oh it does run it loads the boot block, which loads, it at least loaded the second stage, so the full boot block and super block. Otherwise, it wouldn't have ran the second stage for the regular graphics input here. So this won't work. Actually, this might work if the bootloader was loaded. But then we're not doing new things in the bootloader, so I don't know if it works up to that point. <laughs> so I can check that, but I think the boot sector is working so far, which is nice. So we go to third stage and we just like halt or something. We can see if it reaches this point or not. Nothing is output as input. We'll do, instead of doing like 777, I'll do the normal hacker things like Cafe Babe or Dead Beef or something. That way we can tell if we actually hit that point. Uh, we didn't because it doesn't halt. Okay, well that's good to know. That's good to know. So it doesn't reach this point, but I'll just put this here. So that means it is somewhere in either the bootloader or the second stage. It does reach the second stage. However, well, I know these are wrong, aren't they? That's probably what it is. Part of the reason. <laughs> we loaded the boot block to 7C to 8C, which is above 8500. So these will have to change. Um, I can put these addresses and other things in the global addresses anyway, so that they're actually here, not hard-coded. So stuff is at B1000 to C1000 as well. I could put things, I mean, I could like define thoroughly here. Let's do this, boot block address. This is at seven, well, it's technically at seven C to like nine C. I could put like start and end. Maybe. I don't know if that makes more sense. It might make more sense. Because it's two blocks. So it goes all the way up to there. Or I could put where the super block is. I'll do that. I'll do that. Because that'll make... We'll use the super block later, so we can just keep it there. That's okay. Super block address. So we need somewhere above that or below that. Um, memory map. To smap address. The entries are 85. The, st the size. Okay, smap. I guess number. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we could do it at 10. Well, 10 would be A, right? This is at 8C. Sorry. This goes 7C to 8C. Superblock is 8C to 9C. 
So if I want something to be even, we could do A. A is taken up by the font. I guess I'll move that. It can't be at B because B is taken up by first I node. So this could be C. <laughs> or D. We'll make that C. I'll put the S map after A. So instead of 8500, we'll do A500. S map number, we'll do entries. S map entries address, A504. Okay. And then these I can make A. And that should be okay. Um, I don't need to do this because I'm doing this in the bootloader. But maybe I can leave that here. I don't think other things are affected from that. I don't believe. I'm not a believer. Okay. 90,000 should be all right. This should be all right. Okay. That might be why it was a... Uh, doing some odd things there. Not too sure. I can find out. This is written right. Ooh, it does not like that because we rewrote these things in the screen cursor. Well, those should be using the other thing anyway. Uh... Font address and width, yeah. So those are already defined within global addresses, so I'll just do that here. Then we won't need address and width um, or height, because we're doing that already. Okay. Put that there. Okay, still doesn't go to the third stage, which is not good. So I might not be loading it correctly. Don't have that. Uh, file table, we're not using that anymore. I mean, I know this first one works because the second stage is working as normal. That is at 8C plus 12. That should be the first inode block which will be at least two bytes, loading it to B. So it's, it should be I know two, nine, 21, maybe these aren't correct. BL I did not mess with, because I just put it here in EBX. Thousand zero, load sector, redo that. Jump to here. Drive number set to start, yes. Okay. Is that the command port? I don't need these things. Mode info is at 9,000. That might not be correct anymore either. Because <laughs> we're doing 8C to 9C, so this will have to be at a different location. Uh, I'll put it at D. <laughs> no, don't do that. I guess we'll put it at D. That's okay. Mode info block. Let me put that. I don't know if that's the issue, but I'll just make sure it's set in here. So I don't have to worry about it. We can only change it in one place. See if it runs over anything else. Put it at D which that will be changed. Then graphics, mode info is not there anymore. I have the, there we go. User graphics info we'll put over here. I'll just make it offset from D. That is used to set the mode info and user info. Okay, so that should be okay. I don't know if that was overriding anything, but maybe it was. 
Maybe it was. We should jump to the third stage. Just make sure that's two, third stage dot bin. We write the inode blocks, we write one, well we wrote zero for invalid, one for the root directory, two. We set its first block. So maybe I'm not setting the first block correctly anymore. <laughs> for the data blocks for the bootloader, that could be, that could be it. I might have a bug there that I didn't realize. That could be it. Not sure. I spoke global wrong. File not found. Oh, address is dot h. Yeah, let's do. Put the dot h on there. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's make sure it's even getting to this point in here, right? Maybe it's not. I don't know. <laughs> it is. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll debug this and I will be back. I'm sure it's something very obvious that I missed, but it is not going to the pre kernel entry. So I know that is not happening here. It's not reaching this point. So I think that is something to do with um, the first data block not lining up correctly with where it's actually at because it doesn't do anything. So I'll, I'm going to debug this and I'll be back when I figure that out. Okay, I found what the issue was, but I'm just going to show that here right quick. I changed this to dead beef so that I know I have a unique sort of identifier here for the breakpoint in the third stage. I changed a couple lines, but I just want to show you that it does stop at that point first. We don't have anything. It's frozen. And we have dead beef here in EAX. So I know it went to that point. All right. So I know it goes here. I do have to change this to load the kernel and stuff in different areas. And that is all right. So uh, what happened was make disk. I just don't understand how the compile stuff works. I wanted to be fancy with designated initializers. But if I have these and I call functions within these, these function calls here, maybe this is all at compile time. I'm not absolutely sure. I think it's probably all at compile time and not runtime if you do it like this. But these function calls for the inode size bytes were zero. So these were returning zero and the inode did not have the right length in blocks. And that means the first block being set for the other files was not being correct. And yeah, it does seem to work down here where I set all these fields separately, even if I do this extent T. But I think with it all in the one here, it just didn't work. Like the size in bytes, this value is correct, but these values that depend upon that value, uh, it was getting zero for some reason. So I'm just setting them down here outside of this overall one. And it probably would be better to just change it to be consistent like this and just set them all separately, but whatever. That's just, that's all I'm doing there. Just setting them after it's set. And that seems to work. So that is within make disk. Um, And then I just had stuff in the boot sector. Okay. So the only thing I changed in the boot sector was commenting out the line for size sectors. So I think originally I had planned to load things by sector, not by block, but uh, I'm not using that, so I don't need it. <laughs> I just need where the extent zero is. But that does seem to work for loading the bootloader now. Um, the logic was correct. It was just that value was wrong from make disk. That's, that's the only thing. So it, it really wasn't too bad, uh, but okay. So actually, since I know this works, I'll probably get rid of the, um, the commented out code here. So this just looks a little bit cleaner. I don't like all this stuff being here. People do that at work and it drives me crazy. Like, why do you leave it there? Because we don't have an actual change management system. What are you doing there? Don't leave that code there if it's never going to be used again. <laughs> it just clutters up the source. But okay, that's a lot smaller. So we can change the third stage now. to actually see if we can get to the kernel and oh, I have some other new things. Okay. These were the other new things. Uh, since I changed, these are the only other changes when I was debugging, since I changed uh, the addresses for SMAP, the A500 and A504, I'm just setting those explicitly within the third stage. 
So this one was, you know, 8,500 and this was 8,504, but I'm just making sure that it's what I actually set within the addresses file there. Um, same as this, this was 8,504, this is now 8,504 because I'm using that. So that makes it a little bit better, a little bit less hard coding. Okay, since I'm using higher memory areas, at least up to D000, I'm just gonna go ahead and set everything maybe in testing I did below like 11,000. So I'll just do that here. We'll just set it up. Everything below like 12,000. Well, yeah, yeah, everything below 12,000. We'll just say it's for the kernel. We'll just set that for there. That's, that's fine. We're not using that anyway. We can use it for global addresses and things. Uh, okay, so we won't be doing this. Load file will be changing. Well, we won't really have a load file. We'll probably have different file read and open and things instead of that. Uh, so we won't be doing that. We'll be doing other things here. Um, I'm going to load the root directory. And I should load the kernel as well. But uh, to be able to find the kernel, we have to sort of parse the kernel's inode within the file system. So the bootloader is at a fixed inode location. I mean, right now, technically, the kernel is as well, but later that might change. It's not in a reserved inode, right? So we'll say, we'll imagine that the kernel's not at a reserved location. We don't know where it's at. We have to parse the file system. We have to find the inode where the kernel is, find the kernel's inode, and load its data from disk by reading the extent disk blocks in that inode. So that's what I'm doing here. I need to load the root directory to parse the root directory to find the kernel to load the kernel, right? That's what I'm doing here. So do we have FS in here? No, let's include that. We'll put FS.h so we have access to these structs. So I'll have a super block. Um, it's already loaded, so I'll have a pointer. And that's going to the super block address. So that is what I called it, right? Yeah, super block address. And then we can read data from the super block. We can find where the inode is. The first inode block is going to be, well, the first data block probably is going to be where the root inode is. The data for the inode, but the inode data itself is going to be within the inode blocks. So we'll have the first inode block is the base address for all the inodes in the file system, so we'll get that. Uh, I did this differently. <laughs> uh, okay, so since I loaded... I know I'm doing this a little out of order and I'm confusing myself. <laughs> we'll get back to this since I... Let's write it first. Bootsect at B000. That's where I loaded the first inode block. So I'm going to set that up in here just so we have it. And I can use it in other places, uh, at least for the bootloader. I'll call it bootloader maybe. Well, we, can, we won't need it after the bootloader. That's fine. Bootloader first inode address. But then that's, that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> it's not really great because other files are going to see that and it doesn't make sense outside of boot, but whatever. I don't want to hard code things too much, so I want to keep everything address related in this file. So at that location from the boot sector is going to be where the first inode is. The first inode uh, is inode 1, which is reserved to be uh, the root inode. We can get a pointer to that. So instead of doing the first inode block, I can set uh, the root inode pointer. I'm going to do that. to the first inode address. Since the first inode in the file system is inode 0, which is invalid, the root inode is inode 1, so I need to offset by the size of one inode to get to the root inode. So I can do that. Size of inode t. Root inode is inode 1. Okay. Just set up the pointer, and then we can read write, which I have file ops, which I kind of want to rename that, but We'll have to change this as well. <laughs> now on a read-write sectors, we'll have eight sectors because one block is eight sectors. The starting disk sector we want to load from is going to be the data block or dated blocks for the root inode. 
is going to be offset from the first data block. And to convert that into a sector, we have to multiply by 8. So since the invalid inode, inode 0, I didn't write any data for that to disk. There's not a blank block for that. Uh, the root inode is the first data on the disk. The root inode directory entries. I'm loading those to memory here. That's located at the first data block. And converting that to this sector, we multiply by 8. Okay, and then I want to probably put that into somewhere in memory. I can either have something in here or somewhere else. Uh, can do it in here. That's fine. We'll do the null block thing. Hopefully this works. Or we can do fs block size. We'll do that. That's just there. I'll just set that to zero. I uh, lost my place. There we go. Okay, so that is null block, right? Yeah, no block. So into that no block address. Into that address, I want to do read with, well, that is not guaranteed to be loaded in memory, is it? I might want a location that I know is free in memory to do that, actually. Ooh, that's not good. Maybe I should set something else up here. <laughs> uh, we have a bunch of free stuff down here. I get 2,000, 3,000. I can put it at Andre 3,000. I might change this to not be only for the bootloader. So let's just say we'll have like a, a temp or, um, I don't know, work block <laughs> or something. Scratch. Does scratch make more sense? <laughs> Scratch might make more sense. Scratch block address. So I have like a free, three, 3K to 4K will be like free for use for whatever. I'll just say that. Instead of this null block, because I don't know, it might not be guaranteed to be good memory or something. So we'll read into the scratch block. That That's fine. Then we don't need to take up another 4K stack space. Okay, assuming that's correct, we'll find the kernel ID. We'll find the kernel inode since we got the kernel ID and we'll load, load kernel. And then we can do the same for the font if we want to do that. Because we'll need a font for the kernel anyway, so I'll just put notes here. Find a font ID, find font inode, load font from disk. Uh, I'll mark it as in use as well. So we don't override it with a physical memory manager. Let's go ahead. I'll, I guess I'll write this and then change read write sectors because I'm just going to assume that's going to work. I'll write out this code because this is all the other changes I did. But let's assume that we have the stuff in memory at scratch block address. We have a full block of data for the root directory. So we have root directory entries that we need to read to find a directory entry with the ID number for the kernel. And we find that when we find the kernel uh, string <laughs> for the name. We'll get that ID, we find the inode with that ID, we'll load it from disk, reading the X tense from that inode. So I'll do that. So I'll have a directory entry uh, to that block address. I'll have a loop, so while the name So while we have a name, the name isn't empty, we'll say the first character of the name isn't null. And I'll compare on the name to see if it matches our kernel file name. Uh, which is going to be kernel.bin. Size of this is what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Or I can do string length kernel.bin. Um, so while that's not zero, so it's not equal to that name, then we'll keep searching. I'll just do this. Let's find the inode. We'll have an inode t. Inode t inode. And we'll stick this at the first inode address. So... While the ID is not equal to the directory entry ID, we'll keep searching. 
Although if we have the address, can we not just offset from that address? They're not guaranteed to be in order, or we could. If if the inodes were always monotonic, and like inode 2 is always after inode 1 is always after inode 0, you know, if it increases, then we could just offset. But that's not going to work, because we could have inode 4 followed by inode 7, followed by inode 25, you know. So we have to, I'm doing this O of N linear search instead, unfortunately. Oh well. I mean, I'm doing that here as well. It'd be better to have a way to do, like, uh, maybe hashing or something to have them at set offsets, but oh well. Right now it's not too big of a deal. Um, load kernel from disk. Instead of read-write sectors, I had made an abstraction over that in testing, and I called it, like, a load file function, which I think just went through all the inodes and loaded them to disk at a given address, so I guess I can make that. So given an inode and an address, we want to load to that inode. We want to load the inode extent, the file data, to an address. So yeah, I need to do that. can do similar things here. We'll just say if we're looking for a font, we don't need to redo that. We just go back and we'll search for, I think I was using from you 18n. Although I could just search the first characters of the name, right? Instead of doing dot bin, that would probably be better. I didn't think of that. We only need to search for, I didn't want to do that. I only need to search for the prefix. Did not think of that. Okay. Find the inode. We'll reset that while well, it doesn't equal the directory entries. And we'll do this, assuming we found one. Actually, yeah, it still needs to be done. Uh, marking the memory as in use is deinitialize memory region for wherever we loaded it. I'm assuming we're loading this to the font address. So we could just do that. And that's in the uh, the global one, right? Yeah, font address. Yeah, so that one's fine. That one's easier. I still have to make this function, though. All right. The inode will have an extent zero. Uh, we'll have a length in blocks for the file data. And that's how many blocks we're doing, which is block size and size. We'll just deinitialize that for the font so we don't override it in memory. But I do need to make a couple functions. I need to make load file and I need to change read write sectors. But read write sectors will be will work off of load file anyway, so I'm, I'm gonna make load file first. And I'll just do that within the file system folder, the include folder, and I'll call it. I wasn't gonna do dot C, but then I would be including dot C files, and I already have a dot H, so I'm going to call it impl for implementation. Um, if you didn't do this, you'd have, you know, a .c and you would manually compile that with the other files that are going to use the functions for the implementation, but I'm a bad programmer, so I do it this way, but oh well. We'll put impl there. And I'm going to include fs.h anyway. Uh, Simple, so file system implementation functions. We'll just call it that. It's fine. So fs load file. You can make it a bool maybe and say if it failed or not, even though I'm not checking the result. That's fine. That's how the normal load file works. So I'll do it like that. This is given an inode, so inode t inode. Well, it's a pointer. And an address to load to. Uh, if we're doing a bool, we'll need standard bool. We'll just do this here. So this will be load a file to memory. We'll do from disk to memory. We're going to read all of the files blocks. Memory, so I'm going to have all the blocks for all the extents. I'm going to have total blocks. 
three bytes, the blocks of the inodes size. We can keep a running total of how many blocks we read for each extent for the file, and if we pass or surpass the total blocks, then we're done reading and we can end early. That's the purpose of this. Um, and for each new run of sectors or extents, I'll also have a running total for an offset from the beginning of the address. Well, an offset from the address, yeah, I'll just call it that. An offset from the address. So if we read in one sector, we'll end up at an offset of 512. If we read a block, we'll have an offset of the block size, 4096. And we'll keep a running total for each block's written offset from the start of this address. It'll be a linear, just a monotonic offset, that's fine. Okay, I'm not gonna do I, we'll do... I didn't read from the single and double indirect, so I do need to do that. <laughs> uh, I put that off until later because I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I don't think it's that hard, but I didn't do that. Whatever. We'll just read from the normal extents right here. Read inode direct extents. That's okay. So there's only four extents, so that's why I'm hard coding four. Only four direct extents, but we'll have a running total of blocks, which I'll reduce by the number of red at a time. We'll have that while it's above zero. And we'll just call read write sectors. Extent I um, the length in blocks times eight for the number of sectors. And we'll read from the first block times eight, because that converts it to the sector that it starts at. We'll read it into the address plus the offset. That's why, yeah. So I get an initial address, but that doesn't change. And we have to change it to read into the right location in memory. Otherwise, we'll keep overriding the same location. So that's why I added the offset. That makes sense. Read with retry. I like having to remember why I did things, <laughs> but I guess explaining why I did things is good. But we want to update the offset for the next um, set of blocks and the set of sectors. So we'll do that here. Then I plus length in blocks times the block size. The address offset is in bytes. So we're converting the blocks to the number of bytes that were read. And then the total blocks will be reduced by the number of blocks read. And when, we, when we've read all the blocks, we'll stop, we'll end early, effectively. But I also need to check these things. So, uh, if total blocks is still greater than zero, we'll do this. I think it's just another loop. And looping through things like this. But for all the ones in the direct and double indirect extents. So that'll be a few nested loops or something, I don't know. But I'll just have that as a to-do. <laughs> we won't need it for a long time, but I should put that in. So assuming that works, we still need to, <laughs> assuming, we need an address to load the kernel in, and we need to change read sectors, which is in file ops, read write sectors. We won't be doing check file name anymore, although we could change it to some other implementation. Uh, read write sectors will change. I'm not going to be doing cylinder head and sector addressing anymore. Um, the kernel needs to be loaded somewhere. Where do, where do I load the kernel? I'll get back to that. Do I even load it anywhere? I mean, oh, I have a kernel address. Do I already have a kernel address? I don't remember these things. I already have a kernel address. Okay, so that's where I'm loading. I don't need this to be in angle brackets where it won't compile. All right. Okay, do I do anything with that, though? Well, that just means the kernel's loaded. Yeah, okay. So with the kernel loaded and the font loaded, when I did a new map, we get the frame buffer. Yeah, kernel's loaded to memory, then we remapped it with the virtual memory manager. Ah, oh, here we go, yep. So that took the kernel address and mapped it to higher half. And then we removed the lower half mapping, so that should be fine. I mean, the kernel needs changes, right? 
for address changes and things, but that should be okay. So we, we still just need to change read write sectors. Okay. So I'll change that and then hopefully you can load the kernel and see how that works. <laughs> okay, so the size and sectors could conceivably be over 255 at one point. So we'll make these 32. Um, I'm not using cylinder head or sector, so I'm going to comment these out for now. And we won't need them. That's always good. This I have the port set. I had another to do here. If size and sectors is above 255 or 256, then I'll need the loop. To send 256 sectors at a time. So all is red written. Yeah, so I'm still only assuming one full command at a time for up to 256 sectors. If you send a zero, then it sends 256, but I haven't done that because I didn't want to do weird things, but I'm assuming it's only up to 255 sectors at a time, unfortunately. So that, that will need to be put in sooner rather than later. But assuming it works, um, head will be with E0, not A0 for LBA. Three to zero head number. This will now be, I'll do this, or LBA bits 24 to 27. Okay, so instead of head, I'm going to put the starting sector that is sent in, that's the LBA. Uh, shift right by 24. And we'll end that with F. That will get the lowest four bits. Shift to right by 24, we'll get bits 24 to 27. Size and sectors is okay. Starting sector, we want the first eight bits of the LBA. So I'll just end with FF. Also the LBA low. So we don't need one, one base sectors. LBA is zero based, which is nice. LBA low, we'll do bits. 0 to 7, then we need LBA mid, going to 1F4, set a cylinder low, LBA mid, bits 8 to 15, cylinder high will be LBA high, bits 16 to 23. So this will be starting sector, shift right by 8, we'll say, ended with FF, that's fine. And then we can shift it by 16 to get 16 to 23. We'll end that with FF. That should be okay. Okay, so one issue that I've had probably crop up a few times but I haven't noticed is this is still, if we're reading, <laughs> it's only... An int 8, so it only goes up to 127, effectively, sectors at a time. But I want to at least go to full 255 if we want that to happen. That's not great. <laughs> but I'll change that. And also with reading, well, to be similar with writing, I change this to be a word instead of a long, although I don't think it matters here. It might fix or make some things worse. I don't know. I think this would fix a few bugs just in case ATAPIO works better with words instead of long. I'm not sure. For some reason I changed this to word, so I'm just going to have that be a word here. I think it was just to be consistent with writing. We'll just say words. Okay, and write with retry. I did the same thing because I found that writing like a large number of sectors at a time was buggy during my testing but it cleared up when I read them like one sector at a time. See, I'm reading more than a sector at a time. I'm reading however many happens at once, but I had some bugs with that. So I made it consistent with reading and then I'm going to read one sector at a time. So the number of sectors that we're writing, we still need to check if the busy bit is set. I have that here, right? Yeah. Move this over, this all is fine and can be the same. Um, except instead of size and sectors, we can just do 256. So one sector at a time. And then I also had the delay for writing, just in case, I guess. I also had the delay for writing because that's like one full write 
sector. Check if it read the sector all right, I guess, is why I needed that. Okay, I don't know if I have to send the cash flush after every single sector, but I guess we'll do that. Because that's what I was doing. I had the 400 nanosecond delay, but that's where my loop ended. Okay, that's what I did. And then I did this. That's column five, it's column nine. All right, yeah. That goes up to there. Okay. So I'm just copying reading here. I'm reading for every sector. I'm just doing the same thing for writing for every sector. But after writing, I'm sending a cache flush because that was specified when writing, but not when reading, at least on OS Dev Wiki. And we'll wait till it's clear at the cache flush. Okay, so I think that fixed some errors in my testing, but uh, yeah, we're rewriting LBA disk sectors. So hopefully that works. <laughs> Load the kernel and the font. I don't think anything else needed to change for the kernel. We're loading the inode data with FS load file. We go and do all that. The kernel does what it does. I'll just include, um, since FS impl has FS.h, I'll just include that. I'll include that in here. I need to include it in here, in the third stage, because I'm using that FS load file now. Okay, but in the kernel, just to make sure everything worked, I guess I can stop or I can see if it loads or what happens. Let's see what happens. Probably everything will break, but you know, that's just what normally happens. Ah, we get a black screen, so that's good. Do I still have, I don't know if I have an, a halt or anything. No, I don't. Okay. Um, it's just the black screen. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I don't know where the black screen occurs. We can see where it's at, I guess. We have current page directory address. We have this stuff. Um, this stuff would have changed at the bottom. The SMAP addresses, these, these would be changing. So I know these are wrong. I think that's, yeah, number address. This is entries address. Okay. I know that would be iffy memory, so we can fix that right quick. Uh, three meg, that should be okay. I'm allocating. I do want to change to have an actual kernel malloc, although that might be really simple. Like I just copy the malloc and prefix things with K <laughs> and make separate memory areas for variables. But I kind of want to just get it to boot and call it a night. And it might be erroring on this stuff. Like I'm not writing correctly or something. It doesn't even clear the, the clear screen color did not work. So what I can see if is it is if it even gets to this point. Because I'm getting tired and slurring my words. <laughs> oh, we'll have A. Dead B for dead beat. Whoever. I'll just put that there. See if it gets there in the kernel or not, where it stops. Mm, it does not get there. 678 and EAX is 5. EAX is 3. EAX is 4. So it's, it's trying to run some code somewhere. We could see if it's still stuck. In the third stage, I guess. You could see if it goes to like load the kernel or not. But I'll make this differently. Good old cafe babe. Drinking coffee on the French Riviera. That's what she's doing. Mm, okay, so it does get there. So I'm assuming it loads the kernel all right. Because it jumps to the kernel. So I do want to send the kernel like memory map info and stuff as like a, a struct or pointers eventually. That would be cool. Just send it as parms here. That is something I've been keeping in mind. But okay, so this doesn't get here. Mm, does it even go into the kernel? It does. Okay, that's good. That's good. 
Well, I gotta, you know, bisect where these things are happening. Does it go before the colors? Do I need to debug and come back? It looks like it stopped, so that's good. So setting the colors. So it did not set it here, right? Oh. Which would mean it's something with printf or convert color or something. So I can at least narrow down where the issue would be. Yeah. Okay. That wasn't dead B, so it's either in printf or in convert color. Well, that's always fun. I can narrow down if it's in this pretty easily. I doubt it's in convert color. It's probably just in printf. Uh, so what would it be? Messing with malloc or something, maybe? Maybe malloc's wrong. Maybe it's broken. But I probably should set a kernel malloc anyway. I do know that reading and writing sectors in the FS load file works because the kernel is being loaded. So we proved that. It's just erroring out. Well, it's not erroring out. It's just loading like Garbo and doing something it shouldn't be doing. And print F here. So I need to debug this. Uh, standard lib. Standard lib. The only thing I changed in standard lib here for this would be malloc, where I changed this to equal a, because a will always be the return, and maybe sometimes that was giving a wrong pointer for malloc. Maybe it was freeing the wrong pointer. That could be it. If it, if it returned the wrong pointer for malloc, maybe that would be an issue. Oh, also for later, well... Yeah, also for later. I don't think I use these, but I have these. These are in standard live. It could be an enum as well, but, you know, if I want to use eg an exit call later or something, I can do that. So maybe that would work. Maybe I was getting a, an invalid pointer for malloc because this had to be A for the output because... The output will be an EAX from the syscalls. I don't know. Standard IO. I got rid of that thing. Okay, so hopefully this equals like all threes. For making that change. Probably won't. Now it equals five. Okay, well, somewhere along the line, EAX is, is being wrong. And it's just not working from right or from free. Well, not foreground color. Okay, what if I go here? And let's just put in the B. User graphics info. Foreground color, for the sake of argument, because that's the one we're checking against. EBX is zero. Okay, so that's not being set. So does convert color not work for this, because I'm doing all E's? Or is it not calling convert color? Doesn't make sense why it wouldn't call. It's it's called with a, a freaking a thing here. I can make that constant, even. Is it because I put it at a weird address? User graphics info address, is that why? That's being set to zero or something? Is that D? I don't think anything's overriding D. BBE mode, and that's from the second stage. And D. So D to D200 is going to be the mode info. And graphics info, info I'm just setting after D200. Well, I'm setting at D200, but the mode info is going to be D000 to D200. So it should be fine to stick that there. 
I would think. That's where this is going. Uh, but it's not being set. Maybe making that number constant changed it. I don't, probably not. <laughs> no. Hmm, so convert color is not working. Oh, that's nice. That makes no sense why that would be having a zero. This is always fun. <laughs> See what that color is when we pass it in. It's all E's. And that is correct. Okay. <laughs> what is, okay. What, what's the converted color? It's zero. Okay, why is it converted to color zero? That would mean maybe I'm not filling out this info. Uh, which will be from the mode attributes. That would be in second stage, which is mode info block, which is down here. EDI at D. Is that being overwritten somehow? It shouldn't be. I don't know what would be overwrite. Um, no, I don't know. The font, maybe? I don't think the fonts are that large in size, though. Like the nine sectors for term U18. So that would be two blocks, which would be 2000 in hex, which would be A to C. And I am putting the font at, oh, I'm putting the font at C. Oh, okay. So the font would be overriding. That makes more sense. That makes more sense. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's do, that would be the font is overriding it. Let's do this at C and let's do the font at D. And the font overwrites it. We get dead beef and zeros, which I don't remember where I put those. So, as if the font shouldn't override it now. Oh, this one. Yeah, that shouldn't be zero though. Because I changed this to C. I didn't change it in the second stage. Man, yeah, I'm tired. I need to stop doing this. <laughs> VBE mode info is C. C. And there we go. Now we have a color set in the kernel. Wow. If you don't overwrite your graphics data with your font data, stuff kind of just works. You know, you just have to spend like two hours debugging. That's fine. That's fine. Show me the money. Big money, big money. No whammy stop. Oh, look at there. No whammy stop. Okay. So obviously loading files and things is going to be different. It won't work. Because directory is not going to work. We don't have a file table to load, of course. <laughs> Things have to change. But this does boot. So that is where I'm going to call it here. Hopefully I can edit down this video to not have three hours of debugging. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, that's going to be this part. So hopefully it wasn't too boring or was somewhat knowledgeable or entertaining or neither. I don't know. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Since I got this to boot, the next video will be the next part of the file system implementation for this we could we could either change like the print directory and the other commands since we have loading a file we can make saving a file um i think what i want to do is is go with and because i think i remember saying at the end of the last video i want to go with the system calls open read um, open close read write seek so i think i'm going to make those i'll go with the system calls and then if we get those working i can make like you know, abstractions on top of those for f open, close, read, write, seek. 
Um, I may or may not make a kernel malloc and a kernel printf just to keep the memory separate and easier to debug, which would just be copying the current printf and malloc to a k standard IO file and a k malloc file, which I'll, I'm just going to prefix variables and function names with a k for the kernel use. So k malloc, k printf. But the standard IO would have the F, the regular standard IO, not the K standard IO, um, would have these new F open, F close, you know, abstraction functions on top of the system calls for open close and, and so on um, that we can use maybe within the file system implementation, or we can call the file system functions that we make for saving and loading files uh, from the system calls or something. Not really a virtual file system, but sort of some abstraction there. The current shell commands like reading a directory to read the new file system, you know, directory entries. And we can make rename file and move file and copy file. We can make a, make stuff to make directories and remove directories, change directory. Uh, but I'm, but I think, yeah, I can start with the base system calls and try to work off that. So I'll aim for that on the next one. Again, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers.